As always, pause the video and give the question some thought before moving on. In order to determine the weight and the angle needed so that no force is exerted on the hip joint by the leg and cast, we will need to first draw a free body diagram of the given picture. Now when drawing any free body diagram, we first actually need to select the object that we will draw the diagram for, and in this case the best object to use is the leg because we can see that all three forces are acting on the leg. We have the rope over here, another rope here, and then the force of, of gravity essentially pulling his leg down. So let's draw a free body diagram that incorporates those three forces acting on the leg. We'll notice in drawing the free body diagram that we have labeled the downward acting force W1 with the quantity 220 new, 222 newtons because that was mentioned in the problem itself. We've included a 40 degree angle which was shown in the picture and then the unknown angle alpha as well. Another thing to point out is that the force that's acting at that 40 degree angle is indeed 110 newtons. It wasn't really labeled directly in the diagram as 110 newtons. Of course we have this weight hanging over here and as that weight exerts a force downward of 110 newtons there is a similar but oppositely acting force in the rope of 110 newtons. So basically the tension is unchanged throughout this rope here and we can therefore include 110 newtons on the free body diagram. Usually after drawing a free body diagram the next step is to apply Newton's second law which of course says that the sum of the forces acting on an object equals its mass multiplied by its acceleration. We do go back to the question and recall that we are looking for a situation in which no net force is exerted on the leg basically. So if no net force is exerted on the leg that means that the acceleration of the leg is zero meters per second squared. And when we plug in zero meters per second squared into the acceleration we would have zero essentially on the right side of Newton's second law. So in short the sum of the forces acting on this leg must equal zero. And that result will hold true for both the x direction as well as the y direction. And most of the time when you're applying Newton's second law, you want to consider the second law in both the x and the y direction. And sort of analyze those equations independently of one another. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we can go back and start with the x direction and sum the forces that are acting in the x direction. Now to do that we're going to actually have to break the forces into their x and y components. We can see with the 110 Newton force that we can draw its x component by pointing a force to the left of the free body diagram and then a y component that points upward. And using trigonometry we can easily show that the x component could be represented as 110 multiplied by the cosine of 40. The fact that the x component points to the left means that we have to include a negative sign on that and that's very important. The y component points upward and will thus be positive and will be equal to 110 times the sine of 40 degrees. In a similar way W2 can be broken up into X and Y components. In this case the X component points to the right and would be represented as W2 cosine of the angle alpha and then the Y component points upward and is equal to W2 times the sine of alpha. Those are both positive because the X component points to the right and the Y component, component points upward. We'll notice that W1 points directly downward and because of that it will not have any X component. The value of 220 newtons only applies in the Y direction so we will not include W1 in the sum of the forces in the X direction. We'll go ahead and plug in our two X direction forces which are here and here into Newton's second law of the X direction. Now unfortunately this equation contains two unknowns, both W2 and alpha, so we can't yet solve for either one. But one thing we could do is add 110 cosine of 40 to both sides of the equation in order to solve for W2 cosine alpha.
and after doing so we obtain this equation. So it's going to be a good idea to circle that equation and set it aside. We will refer back to it shortly. Now let's recall that the sum of the forces in the y direction also equaled zero. So what we'll do is take those forces in the y direction and set them equal to zero. We can refer back to the free body diagram to remind ourselves that we have three forces acting in the y direction. We have W2 sine of alpha, we have 110 sine of 40, both of which are pointing up and will therefore be positive. And then we have the weight of the leg, which is pointing downward, and as a result, we'll actually have a negative value to it. So we'll add those three forces that we just circled and set them equal to zero. As before, it might be a good idea to solve for the unknown portion of this equation. So we'll add 220 to both sides and also subtract 110 sine of 40 leaving us with this equation, which contains the same two unknowns as the equation that we had put on hold, which I've deposited up at the top of the screen. So we still haven't solved for W2 or alpha yet, but we are going to be able to do so with a little bit of algebraic ingenuity next. So let's take a look. Notice that we've stacked the equations on top of each other, and we've done this for a reason. It turns out that you are permitted algebraically to divide two equations by one another. Now when we do so, W2 divided by W2 will just be 1, which essentially is negligible. So that basically cancels out the W2s. Sine of theta, excuse me, sine of alpha divided by cosine of alpha actually gives us tangent of alpha. That's just a trigonometric identity. That sine of any angle divided by the cosine of the same angle can be simplified to just the tangent of that angle. And then we can pick up our calculators and perhaps divide this quantity by this quantity. And if we do that, we obtain approximately 1.772. It's now very easy to solve for alpha if we simply take the inverse tangent of both sides of this equation. So alpha would turn into the inverse tangent of 1.772, which on our calculator gives us 60.6 degrees. So alpha is now solved for, leaving us to find W2 next, and that's going to be relatively straightforward once we have alpha. Because we can actually come over and use that equation that we had written in red and solve quite easily for W2. Let's go ahead and rewrite that equation. We'll substitute in our value for alpha, and then we'll divide both sides by the cosine of our alpha, which was 60.6 .6 degrees, and that will give us the value for W2. And it turns out to be approximately 171 newtons.